We'll take that then to Premier Windy and we'll say, right, this is what we want. Uh, we've got the people behind us for this. Are you going to listen to the Western Cape people or not? And then if they don't, we'll move on to stage two of the plan, which is, well, if, you, if you're not going to listen voluntarily, uh, then we're going to have to force you to listen. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to News in 5. Uh, this is going to be a very special edition of News in 5, which means it's probably not going to be five minutes, probably a little bit longer. And I have a special guest joining me today, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Craig from the Cape Independence Advocacy Group. There is some major news and major development happening with the Cape Independence Movement. And here to chat about it is Phil Craig. And I'm so excited to have him on board because I watched that press conference live stream that you did last week. And some very promising data coming out of that. And please, Phil, share with us, in your opinion, what are the biggest takeaways from the new poll that you guys did? Yeah, thanks, Joe. It's always great to be with you and uh, yeah, with uh, with your audience too. Um, look, I mean, it was a significant poll. I think you know it probably wasn't a great surprise, but it's also yeah, a nervous time when you're waiting to get those results and just to make sure the world looks like yeah, how you th you thought the world looked. Um, Two biggest takeaways, you know, 68% now in favour, 68% of Western Cape voters now in favour of Cape independence, more than two thirds, absolutely massive, massive number. Yeah, it really should be very difficult for a democratic government to ignore the fact that two thirds of their population support a referendum on a specific issue. Um, and then 58% in favour of Cape independence itself, which for the first time and even beyond the margin of error for the poll, which was which was 5%, uh, the, uh, the majority of Western Cape voters now favouring uh, Cape independence outright. And those are two massively, massively significant numbers um, and, you know, really are in line with this growth path of, you know, people have sort of gone from this, well, look, it was a nice idea, um, but, you know, not so sure till suddenly, you know, people are realising this is the solution. So, yeah, hugely significant. Very much so. And just to be clear, because this is something that I thought of, when we first, I mean, people can go back on my channel and see when you and I first started talking about this, till now it's quite quite a journey um but you know when we first spoke about it the, the the challenges that this movement faces um and in order to get it to a referendum stage you needed a 50 plus one percent or something like that 50 percent plus one have you achieved that now well yes this so so this would be above the 50 percent plus one yeah so so 50 percent plus one is half the population plus one person which means that yeah the other half of the population is minus one person and so 50 plus one is 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 an absolute majority that's the that's the the, the significance of that and clearly in this situation at 58 percent or and we, yeah so how it works with the margin for error margin for error of five percent so although we've got 58 percent it could be 53 percent it could be 63 percent we don't know it's in that range but wherever it falls within that range it's still an outright majority of people in the western cape who support cape independence fantastic okay so you know in your press uh, conference you mentioned that you guys are going to try and push now for a referendum in 2024 which will make south africa Wow, very exciting. Uh, is uh, is that possible now? Do you think Do you think you guys will get there? What What's the next step for you guys? Sure. So, well, look, that's a public call and in many ways. So, so, so now it's it's about yeah. It, it becomes less and less about us and more and more about the people of the Western Cape, and that's exactly how it should be. Ultimately, this ends in the people of the Western Cape having their say. So, in many ways, we've sort of floated this idea, we've developed the idea, uh, we've polled, we've sort of shown people that you're not the only person that thinks this is a good idea. Year. we've gone through the ridicule and the name calling and, and so on and we've got to this point in time now where two-thirds want a, a referendum uh, you know, a clear majority support Cape independence um, so the next thing to do is as you say is to have that referendum so look the only one the only one person in, in South Africa who can call a referendum on Cape independence and that's Premier Alan Windy and really the next step is to to publicly put Alan Windy on the spot <laughs> And which is what we've done in this website we've created uh, you know www.capereferendum.org and, and that's an incredibly simple referendum it's an incredibly simple website and we've and we've boiled this whole topic down to three uh, points one two three easy as one two three number one the majority of us want a referendum number two 
even your own parties predicting possible doomsday in 2024. We need a referendum on Cape Independence. Number three, DA leader John Steen Hazen personally promised me and the CIAG a referendum on Cape Independence in 2021. So we, we want it. We need it. You promised it. Now give us the referendum. And there are two outcomes. They can give us the referendum. Uh, and I desperately hope they do, and that would be the democratic thing to do, or they can deny us the referendum. And then we know where we stand with our government. We've got a government that is acting undemocratically and is not willing to listen to the people that elected it. And then that moves on to the next stage of the process. We've got an election in 2024. And if the Western Cape government isn't going to voluntarily listen to the people who elected it, then we're going to have to make sure that we force them to listen in the election at 2024. So let's take that as a two-step process. Are they going to listen? We're publicly asking, we're asking people to sign up on that website and um, so that we'll have thousands upon, and we really have thousands upon thousands of people in support of that. We'll take that then to Premier Windy and we'll say, right, this is what we want. Uh, we've got the people behind us for this. Are you going to listen to the Western Cape people or not? And then if they don't, we'll move on to stage two of the plan, which is, well, if you, you're not going to listen voluntarily, uh, then we're going to have to force you to listen. So I think one of the concerns that people have, Phil, is that whether or not the referendum voting process will be free and fair, as they say. You know, we've seen recently with the U.S. elections and the Zimbabwean elections, there's a lot of controversy around them, people questioning whether they were really free and fair. Um, and I think, you know, a lot of people are skeptical about holding a referendum and whether or not the ANC will try and interfere or use certain tactics to derail the voting process. What are your thoughts on that? Well, look, so I, so, um, yeah, yeah, I think the ANC are capable of, of doing any manner of things. Thus far, they've, they've kept it fairly clean around Cape Independence. Uh, you know, I accept entirely that may not always be the case. Um, but ultimately, in terms of the referendum, you know, we are going to need to have international observers. Fortunately, we kind of have a relatively robust electoral system at the moment. We have the IEC, which you know, probably isn't quite as independent as we'd like, but, it, but at least it sort of is, is broadly independent. We still have free and fair elections. Uh, and then we'll need to have both internal observers and we'll need to have international observers to make sure that uh, that election is free and fair. And I, th and, I th and I think there's a really reasonably good prospect that that will be a free and fair referendum. I, that's not something that I'm unduly concerned about at this point in time. Um, but we will absolutely have to 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 make sure that happens and, and to you know, cover off the basis. Uh, but it's not something I'm unduly concerned about. Last question is ANC has been known to you know use violence to get what they want or they they cause riots or they'll cause you know some even go as far as saying there's going to be a civil war um which will obviously be started by the anc i don't think the cape independence movement itself is going to throw the first stone i highly doubt that if anything if there's any violence it's all because of the anc and that's what they do they they stir and they they may want to create a situation where the western cape is ungovernable um, do you guys have fears about that? And if you do, um, you know, what are your thoughts? What any any plans to avoid that? Yeah, look, it would, it would by na be naive to, to to not think that that's not a, a a a possibility. It's not one again that we're unduly concerned about. Um, I think the ANC itself. Um, has had plenty of opportunities to 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 uh, you know stamp out the Cape Independence movement, and actually it hasn't as of yet. Um, and I, and I think you know one of the things that's interesting is the ANC is extraordinarily sensitive to international opinion of it, which is which is which is slightly bizarre in some ways, but it sees itself as the good guys. Um, and you know its 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 whole mission is around self determination. Its purpose was the self determination of South Africans. Um, yeah, it's fought for democracy. So I think really it would be very very difficult. Um, uh, for the ANC on the international stage uh, to, to suppress a democratic movement and the fact that the Cape Independence Movement has been so overtly inclusive, non-racial, democratic and peaceful, uh, you know, makes it almost impossible um, uh, for, for, for you know, South Africa and the ANC then to sort of carry out a, a sort of military thing. Because what are you doing? You, you know, you're literally then imposing colonialism on the, uh, on, on the Western Cape. You know, you're dominating a section of your population against their will by force. Um, and clearly, if the ANC wants to do that at this point in time, it's going to be difficult to resist. Um, but that would just that would just be the beginning of the end. You know, it would be an entirely untenable situation. And I, so, I, so the ANC, I don't think are going to do that. I don't think that that's stupid. That's not.
not really something I'm worried about. Um, I think you, you know, you, if there is going to be an issue, it's going to be more likely low level stuff. Uh, and actually, probably people like the EFF are probably going to be far worse agitators uh, than the than the ANC, and the, and they'll have to be dealt with. Um, you know, it's it's difficult. Um, I don't see this turning into a huge major conflict. No, I don't. I think if they have a democratic mandate and it's been clearly democratic and peaceful, then that's going to be quite difficult to resist. Uh, there probably are going to be some skirmishes around there, and I'm sure that the Western Cape government will will, will deal with them uh, deal with them fairly quickly as they do the taxi strike. Amazing. So just to recap very quickly, uh, basically next step is referendum, pushing for that at least and hopefully getting it. Uh, and that I think is history in the making. Um, very exciting times for CIAG and the entire movement, everybody involved. Uh, I know everybody works together to make it happen. So uh, well done to all of you involved. Uh, and a big thank you to you, Phil, for all the work that you do. Uh, as usual, we'll keep everybody updated with the process of what is going on. I'm very excited to see how things will unfold. Uh, so yeah, Phil, if there's anything you want to say in closing, now is your chance. Okay, look, I, perfect. Thank you. Always great to be here. And I think there's one thing that I'm going to keep on saying between now and the elections. We're coming to the point in time. This is it. That, yeah, before we've kicked open the door, this is it. Uh, and actually, we as a collective people are going to decide. It's not going to be about the CIAG. And actually, you're going to know when you get to 2024 whether the DA have given a referendum or they haven't. When you go to the ballot boxes in 2024, you're going to have to vote for Cape Independence. And actually, if the DA have then given us a referendum and, and therefore this isn't a party political issue, that's fine. That's absolutely the first choice. If we get to 2024 and the DAs deny this an issue, knowing everything they know now, then we're going to have to vote against the DA and we will make sure there are political options that wouldn't remove the DA from power, but that would force it to listen, which would be much the same as we saw in the UK in these Brexit issues where, where actually you needed this third party to force the government to listen to the people. And I think that's the situation. That's certainly one of the situations we're heading to. And actually, we can't do anything about that. We can open the door, but the voters of the Western Cape are going to have to do their part uh, and, and you know it's really important that we that we don't collectively get bullied by the DA into accepting their version of the future we want we you know I think most of us think they've done an excellent job of going in the country we don't need to remove them from power but we do have to force them to listen and that may involve tactical voting in 2024. So I've already been to capereferendum.org I have cast my name and signature and I encourage everybody to do so as well. Link is in the description. Phil, once again, thank you so much for your time. I'll chat to you again soon. Perfect. Thanks, Joe. Great to be with you. Thanks so much, Phil, for your time. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think the ANC will be successful in derailing the secession movement of Cape Independence? Or do you think Cape Independence will be successful? And let me know, are you going to partake in the referendum? You don't have to say if you're going to vote yes or no, but... Will you partake in the referendum? Don't forget all the links in the description below. Thank you so much. Stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you at the next one. Cheers.